did a study, you know, back about 15 years ago, this word oxytocin became very popular, uh, this hormone, uh, because they found that women only can feel happy and stress-free when oxytocin levels are at a normal, healthy level. If oxytocin is low, women have high stress levels. So oxytocin became known as the hormone that lowers stress in women. Then about 10 years later, they discovered that if you don't also have estrogen levels at a reasonable level, then the oxytocin doesn't work. And when you're in a relationship with a guy, uh, a partner, your estrogen levels will rise. And estrogen is associated with needing and depending on someone. Uh, if you feel I can't need or depend on someone, your testosterone levels rise. And when your testosterone levels are rising, your estrogen goes down, then the, the, the little things a man can do for you don't provide as much happiness. And when, you, when your oxytocin can't lower your stress because your testosterone levels are high, then what happens is you start becoming overly uh, picky. You can be overly dissatisfied. Uh, you find, you know, even though you're witnessing it, you go, why am I not happy? Why am I getting picky? Why am I being judgmental? Why am I being critical? I don't want to, you know, feel this way. But it's kind of inevitable if your estrogen levels are not rising. So to have estrogen be there, you need to give yourself permission to, to need a man, to not have to be independent. You can be independent, so to speak, during the day and then, then realize I'm looking <laughs> forward to not having to do it all when I get home. And that's a huge transition uh, to make. It takes some time to develop that. And as a dating woman, what I would suggest to overcome this tendency to become overly picky, uh, overly judgmental, overly critical that puts up a wall is to make a, a specific uh, intention that I'm going to date men who are not uh, perfect, who are not my soulmate, but I'm going to, if I can say this, use them to uh, increase my oxytocin. But I'm not going to demand that they be the ultimate soulmate for me. Now, let me explain why that works. Uh, if you were to come to my, if you were shopping for a house, and you came to my house, you wouldn't be able to enjoy it. Uh, you know, if somebody comes to my house, I just had a couple of guests today, and they were saying, oh, my gosh, what a beautiful house you have, and look at this, and look at that. And that was their response. But if they were buying the house, they go, oh, this is a beautiful house, but let me look in the basement. You know, let me look at the cracks. Let me <laughs> let me see, mm -hmm. you know, how the plumbing works. You know, you're going to suddenly become uh, vigilant, hyper-vigilant to, to sort of see what's not going to work. And if you don't, if your expectation is I'm not going to buy this house, that hyper vigilance that this could be the wrong person, uh, this could be a person who hurts me, this could be a person I can't trust, this could be a person who's not good enough for me, that hyper vigilance actually puts up a wall and increases testosterone because you're protecting yourself. And when you're protecting yourself, your, your male hormones increase rather than your female hormones increase when you feel there's no danger. And certainly when you're looking and picking for a long-term relationship, there's a danger of picking the wrong person. So if you just kind of go, my phrase for it is to create a series of positive dating experiences because it will be more positive if you're not expecting them to be perfect, but you're having a good time. And basically part of having a good time is coming back to the point I made before which is being clear about what you like. Never ask a man what he likes. Uh, I mean, you, when I say never, it's just don't do it that much. <laughs> but the bottom line is focus more on what you like because if he can provide for you what you like, then you will feel happy to be with him. And when you're happy to be with him, he will want to provide more for you. If, if you're doing what he likes, uh, then he tends to just have a good time, but... But he doesn't feel like I was successful in providing a good time for you. So there's an you know, interesting book, uh, which is Men Who Like, uh, Why Men Like Bitches. That's a popular book from many years ago. And, and part of the whole message in that book is something I've been teaching many, many years as well, which is that what makes you most attractive to a man is your authenticity. 
and the authenticity is the I have to add a caveat to it the authenticity of your female side not necessarily the authenticity of your masculine side let that be shown more in workplace but what are the parts of you that you don't show in the workplace let that part of you uh, come forth in your relationship and in that theme of why men like bitches it's it's um you know, it, the, the concept there is a woman who's true to herself and she's not afraid of being herself. But it's not a woman who's masculine, who's dumping on a man or trying to do everything herself. It's the flip side of that is she knows what she likes and she asks for what she wants. And she doesn't do what she doesn't like and she doesn't do what she doesn't want. That's the message of that book and that's the message I have seen again and again is that if a woman... Uh, gives up herself to please a man. If a woman does something she doesn't want to do, doesn't like to do, doesn't feel ready to do, doesn't feel comfortable doing before she's ready, then she's doing a gift to him for sure. It feels loving, like I'm doing this loving gift. But really, I'm coming from a place of trying to please him, and then maybe he'll please me. And you got to reverse that. He has to please me, and I respond with happiness and my happiness is actually what pleases him the most. So that, that's a mm -hmm. lot to, to think about, what I just said, but I think maybe helpful for some people. Very, very helpful. Very, very helpful. And I think that the, a distinction you're making here that's really important is for many women, we might even have lost track or not really even be in touch with what our needs are. And you're making a big distinction between knowing and expressing our needs in relationship to a man and being needy. And I think that's a really important distinction. Yes, it is. And uh, in that dynamic is when we're talking about romance is – what would you like to do? You talk to a guy, you just say, oh, gosh, you know, this concert's coming up. I'd love to go. Will you take me? That's a phrase. You know, not mm -hmm. I'm going to take you. It's not what would you like to do or do you really want to go? Don't even go there. Just really what you want is even if you – let me say it differently – is quite often women are concerned and afraid of saying what they'd like to do because maybe yeah. he'll feel obligated to do that and he doesn't really want to do that. that that's like a real concern whether you're in a relationship or you're dating for a while, uh, you're married even, is that women often don't express what they would like to do because they're afraid their partner will do it out of an obligation. Uh, that they'll do it just to please you, but they don't really want to do it. That's a that's a kind of thinking that is sabotages your relationship. You, if you notice that kind of thinking, you want to say that would be true if he was a girl. <laughs> See if I say <laughs> right, that, if, right. if, 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 <laughs> if I say to my wife, you know, I really really want to go to this movie, and she thinks inside, okay, uh, I don't really want to go but I'll do that to make him happy. The first few times, uh, that would be okay with her. But then after a while, she's going to say, you know, why do we always do what you want, not what I want? Uh, but, see, men are different. And, um, and, it, and some men will whine a little bit if that was to happen again and again and again. And then you can say, well, what would you like to do? And then he says, well, let's go to this game. And you go, well, I like, I like going to those games. Or if you don't, you just say, oh, well, why don't you just go with one of your friends? I don't need to go along with you. And let it be. And, and stand your ground because otherwise he, he, he won't learn to find his masculinity. He'll get whatever he wants, what he needs, as opposed to coming from the masculine side of him, which is what he wants. And ultimately, what does a man want in a relationship? He wants to feel successful in providing for you.